uh, it was actually Japan. So already the second collection was bought by two Japanese companies, and that even strengthened our belief in the fact that if we go out of Helsinki, because again the second collection was presented in the Helsinki International Fashion Fair, and the two Japanese companies came there and actually bought the collection. So we started to think that if they come all the way from Japan to Helsinki and find us, how we can make you know, it easier to be found if we go outside of Finland. Of course, it's always important to have feedback also from our customers in the sense that who are the buyers, like the buyers for the shops or the shop owners and all that. How do their own customers, so the end users, react to the collections, to the fit of it and all that. And I think what is really most important is that to listen to if it's something that has to do with the structure of the clothing, you know. If you have a problem with the fit, for example, so that, you know, you have a too low shoulder or too short shoulder length or that length or something that, then it's unwearable. It's again one of those quality issues. Even though how pretty the dress or the piece is, but if you can't wear it, it's not the right size what it's supposed to be, that is especially important information and knowledge in order to have the actual physical products ready. But then on the other hand, I think it is always like a, it is like a careful balancing, like if you ask the customers, like, what would you like, you know? And then people say, I would like to have yellow. And then if you provide the yellow, this is just a very simple example, if you provide the yellow, but then there is the one company who provides the purple, that is the unexpected choice, and you know, offering, then people will go for the purple. Or at least some of the people go for the purple. And when you're making art, it's again, I'm, I'm reflecting this into the art perspective. I don't know any painter or sculptor who would go around and start asking people, how would you like me to do my painting? Should I paint there a tree or maybe a dog or a house, you know? They put whatever they want in there, what they feel needs to be there in order to make the art piece complete. So you have to carefully listen to the consumers and customers when it's like a structural issue that could be a hindrance or an obstacle for selling the collections. But you can't really start looking for the actual artistic input from the customers because then again, you are in the trend cycle in a way. It is always discussed with the local distributors or the agents, you know, because for example in Japan, the, the margin that they use is usually three times, so they take the wholesale price and they multiply it with three, and in Scandinavia it's obviously different than in the US. So together with discussing with our local partners, it is set to a certain standard in different countries. So obviously in Japan, for example, because of the costumes, and but also in the States, the clothes are more expensive than they are, for example, in Scandinavia. We produce uh, partially in Finland, so uh, all the knits are made in Finland. It's a small knitting factory 30 kilometers north of Helsinki, and we work with them for the past 12 years. And then the so-called sawn and cut garments, they are made in uh, Lithuania at the moment. And then the fabrics come mainly from Italy, France and Germany. So everything is like made in Europe. We have approximately, it did depend, uh, differs a little bit from the fall, winter, uh, spring, summer collection, but the yeah, approximate number is 80 in total collection. But for the show, obviously, we don't show everything, and then in the show, you always incorporate things that are only for the catwalk. But, but the average size of the seasonal collection is 80 pieces. Well, actually, uh, now I want to talk about Finland because we have a little bit different target groups, you know, what comes to like the audience in the US or in Japan, for example. But for example, in Finland, where we have made the most careful like customer studies, the age group, for example, is really uh, different. So we have uh, girls who are in their pre-teenage years, so girls in 12 and 13 years of age, and then we have up to ladies who are plus 70 year old. And we started to get really interested in like why are these older ladies become Ivana Hansen's fans? And the reason was, was that when they have been young, they have been only wearing dresses. So their youth was the dress time when you were really feminine and wore only dresses. 
And we have a lot of dresses in, in our collections. I would say like the distinctive signature Ivana Kazinki garment is a dress. And uh, overall, it is a variety of people, but I would say that a lot of our clients have a little bit bohemian lifestyle in a way. They are not afraid of being attention seekers in a way that they might get comments about how they dress and what they wear. And so that they don't take fashion too seriously. They enjoy life, you know, and then they are very uh, cautious about how they dress in a way that they know their own style. At the moment, in total, we have only nine people in our own company, and then we have the, you know, the international agents. Of course, they have their own company, so they are not in our pay own payroll. And then, of course, you know, the production sites are separate by identities and their own companies.